Yes, ifs and buts. Let's get the view of a former chief executive of the Football Association, Mark Palios, joins us now. Mark, good afternoon. Nick and I just talking there about uh, the verdict, but football hasn't come out of it very well with what we've heard over the past week. Do you agree? I, I think it's very difficult to uh, see played out uh, through the media, line by line, word, for, word by word, industrial language that happens on the pitch and has happened on the pitch. Um, for many, many years and happens probably in the Sunday League as well. So in that regard, um, I don't think that uh, it, it, does, it does stand up to the scrutiny uh, and everybody feels comfortable about it. Um, but it does happen, it has happened, and that doesn't condone it. Um, but if you've played the game, you understand that the game moves quite quickly. Uh, you don't stand around and have a rational debate with people about various things. Uh, and sledging has been part of the game. It's not just a part of football, it's, it's part of cricket, it's a part of a lot of games. Um, so again, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a part of reality. Uh, of course, the element of, of, of racist language and racist abuse and casual racism has no part to play. And I think, uh, again, the, uh, the seriousness with which it's taken, uh, fortunately, um, by the authorities and by the clubs and by the players, I think, and by the media in this country, um, is the reason that we've had such, uh, such, such a profile given to this case, mm. and, and rightly so. It, it was admitted by Terry that he had used th this language on the court and that it, uh, on the pitch and that it, it was misunderstood. I mean, o over the years, Mark, we, we keep being told that the kick it out campaign, that racism in the, in the game is, is on the wane. Do you believe that that is not the case and it is seriously still an issue? I think uh, there are two points in that. I think the first point is that people are aware the you know, casual racist uh, insults, if I can use that term, um, just are not allowed. They're not part of the game. They, they won't be countenanced. The second question, and the bigger question, is is the game dealing with racism effectively? Uh, and in that regard, I think it has certainly improved since I played as a player. Um, and part of that has been the effort that's been put in by the authorities, by the clubs. Uh, but but the people you should really ask about this are the black players and the black coaches mm. rather than myself. But I would say that we may, we may overstate the part that the authorities and the clubs have played in taking racism out of the game, because I do think that it's been relatively easy for the authorities to latch on to the change that we've seen in society generally over those years. I mean, you only have to go back to look at some of the the television programs in the 70s to see that attitudes have changed generally in society. And I think football certainly kept up with that and football certainly tries to I improve the position on racism. Um, the question uh, that, that, that always um, gives you concern is whether or not it creeps back if you're not vigilant and, and certainly they have to stay vigilant. And I think um, lessons can be learned from, if you like, the parallels with the Damalo at, at the Taylor case whereby it's not such a it's not really the overt racism that we're talking about, it's the systemic racism. And by that I mean the authorities need to sort of move on from this debate and start to look at why we don't have more black coaches than we do. Why why aren't black coaches represented? It may be a generational thing, it may be something that time will fix, but it's that type of thing uh, that we need to be dealing with. But again, you know, you see it rear its head. Uh, unless you keep vigilant, and um, this is part and parcel of that. Everybody has responded in a way saying this was a serious offence. For John Terry, of course, he's not guilty. Uh, and I think importantly, the magistrate said and, and took, uh, was at pains to say two things about both the witnesses. Um, one was that, was that Anton Ferdinand um, was, was brave to come forward as a witness. He was a reluctant witness, and as a consequence, I think he's got to have credit for that, because that's the type of action that that really is needed from people, individual bravery I in fronting up issues as and when they feel there's a need. But secondly, and importantly for John Terry, I think the magistrate was at pains to point out that John Terry was indeed a credible witness, which of course may have a bearing on um, how the FA's due process, which will follow this when they look at the disciplinary offences and, and, and the charge of bringing a game into disrepute is heard. Marcus Nick I was going to go on to that. What should the FA do now? Well, I think um, the FA should, first and for, foremost, for me, one of the things they should be doing is to act very, very quickly because this has gone on long enough and uh, it needs to be dealt with quickly, both from John Terry's personal perspective but also from the game's perspective, and I would hope that they would do that. My understanding is that they will 
Um, they will uh, look at the, the, the evidence, they'll sit back, uh, they will take into account what's been said at the trial, uh, and they will, their own due process will, 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 will take effect. If they continue with the charges, which I think they probably would have to do, um, they will then look at it. Of course, they have a, a, it's a totally different charge to the criminal charge that John Terry has been facing in court. Uh, and that's a very serious offence, you know, it's a criminal offence. And the burden of proof is that much higher. The burden of proof on a disciplinary is more akin to what you'd find in a civil case. I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding is, a, a, as opposed to um, beyond reasonable doubt for a, for a criminal case, it would be just on the balance of probabilities that uh, John Terry had brought the game into disrepute by uttering racist remarks. Yeah, so, but, but, again, but Mark, people Mark, sorry. are better qualified than I am. Mark, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but, but I, I, we, all, we all take that on, on board what you're, you're saying, but is it not going to be very difficult for an FA panel to act against John Terry when uh, the Chief Magistrate has been so explicit about no one being able to be certain exactly what John Terry said, even taking into account what you quite rightly say about the lesser burden of proof? Yeah, I, and, and I think that's for lawyers to answer. What's the difference when you look at what he's saying between um, beyond reasonable doubt and on the balance of probabilities. The point I make is um, I, I was interested in the comment that the magistrate made about John Terry being a credible witness because he's the one who's saying what he said and why he said it. So that, of course, would begin to flavour, I would have thought, people who sit down. But as I say, the FA will bring in uh, presumably a, a, a very well-qualified lawyer to look at this aspect. Uh, as they do when they put together their independent tribunals. Yeah. And is, is there a case for John Terry saying, I should now have the England captaincy back? Um, I, I think it, it, it's a decision that uh, if I was at the FA, that, that's one you would hand back to the manager to make a decision upon. Because ultimately, um, everything else being equal, in other words, no, no charges hanging over, uh, the situation, then that would be a decision for the manager to make. Um, they made the decision at the time, and they justified it at the time, and you could argue, you know, we're now trying to judge it with hindsight, but they made the decision at the time, as I recall, based on the fact that having these charges hanging over him would mean that it was difficult for him to carry out his, his duties, his ambassadorial duties, if I may call it that, as a captain. As a consequence, this has been removed. He still has, of course, the uh, the FA charges are bringing the game into disrepute, which have to be dealt with. But once they are dealt with, uh, if they go the same way, then I guess you could argue that he doesn't have the, the, the problem. And <laughs> it's not a nice problem for, for, for Roy Hodgson to have, because uh, Stephen Gerrard did particularly well, mm. at, um, in everybody's opinion, at uh, Euro 2012. But I guess they would be handing that uh, monkey back to uh, Roy Hodgson to make the decision as to who his captain is. Mark, thank you ever so much uh, for joining us this afternoon and giving your reaction following uh, the news. Mark, thank you. Uh, other important footballing news this afternoon from the Scottish Football Association.